my style is, I'd say, very casual, very relaxed. Um, it's anything involving people. I absolutely love people. And that to me is what it's all about. I mean, I just don't think there's anything more interesting than photographing the human spirit. And I am nuts about people. And, and I find it really, it's, it's always changing. And, and, you know, people are never the same. And, and person, because everybody has their unique personality. Well, let's, let's take a look at that right there. So how do you get that kind of look at the person that you want? How do you reach in there and, and get that expression that you're looking for? Well, I think it first starts with taking a personal interest in people. I think that's really critical. I'm not afraid of people, so I look them in the eye and I, I embrace them. So Bambi, what are sort of the one, two, three steps that you follow when you approach any kind of photograph? The first thing that I do, um, if I'm not shooting in my studio, obviously in my studio I'm very familiar with where the light's coming from, is I want to find where uh, the light source, where the prettiest light source is. Um, because that's going to be, that's my foundation, I must lay that first. The second thing that I'm going to look for is the location itself. Is it a distraction? Um, I like clean, simple lines. As you look, when you look through any of my photography, very seldom do you see a lot of background. It's not about the location to me, it's about the face and about the subject. Um, once I have identified the location where I want my subject to, to appear, where I want them to be, the most important element that has to go into it is having my subject forget the cameras there. So I really want to take a personal interest in my subject at that point, look into their eyes and talk with them and, and get them to forget about that monster, the camera that's there, and then really be able to pull from them great expression because at the end of the day, expression beats perfection any day of the week, and if you have the most perfect photograph in the universe, it's a zero if you have no expression from your subjects. And if you have fabulous expression, all bets are off. There's no bad photograph. If you have a great expression from, if you're photographing your child at home, you're a mom and you have the most fabulous expression off your little child, and there's a light socket on the floor, who cares? Nobody will ever see it because the expression on your child's face is so phenomenal. So how do you get that expression? What's the, what's the little secret that you do? Um, I'd have to say that I, um, I play. I play with people. Um, I, I, I you know, ask them all kinds of crazy questions, and I really listen to what their answers are. I'm really curious about people. Um, I, I like to, um, to play around a lot. I mean, I'm very much a jokester. When I'm working with children, I am absolutely clowning around with them. If I'm photographing an adult, the most important thing for me is to get them to relax. I don't want them to think about it as a photographic experience. You see, if they start thinking of it in the, the photographic session as a photographic entity, I lose their soul. I lose who they are as a person. I really want to draw from them who they are. So I like, I quite often will ask them questions about, you know, what kind of things do they like to do? What makes them happy? You know, just, you know, really questions about, you know, what's your favorite color or, you know, what do you do for a living? And I pay very close attention to the expressions on their face as I communicate with them because small um, things will happen with their mouth or their eyes that will show a little bit of excitement that'll tell me like for instance if they have children you know I want to know about their kids and you know what's the funniest thing your child ever did you know how old are your kids things of that nature. Awesome. Now what are some of the key things that you use every time you pick up a camera? As far as the nuts and bolts of the equipment yeah. um, I want fast long lenses Okay. For me, that's the most important thing. Um, yes, I have wide-angle lenses, and I'll use them occasionally, but I really prefer good glass, so I want um, 2.0, it's like my favorite f-stops are like around 2.8, 2.0, shallower depth of field, because my image is very much here. It's not about this, it's about this, and the heart, and the soul, so I really want to get I want to become intimate with that person. I, I'm a very intimate photographer. To me, it's very much about this area of their face. So I like like the 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 is one of my very favorite lenses to work with. I love the 135 2.0 and the 50, the 50 millimeter uh, 1.2 lenses. Those are like my three very favorite lenses to work with. Um, other than that, that to me is the, the foundation. Um, I try to find a nice location where I can have some natural light. I prefer, if possible, working with the light from a window or in an outdoor environment, if possible. Um, first and foremost, because I find people become less intimidated by those kinds of environments than they do with lots of lights, I find that the more equipment that I have, the more uncomfortable that they become because it becomes more photographic. It becomes a more photographic experience. Right. Um, once that is met, 
Then it's more to me about finding out who the person is. Um, then it becomes more of a, um, of a personal expression. It, it becomes more about our personalities meshing and the art of communication. That to me is, is the real key to success. So you continue to engage them in a conversation as you're photographing? Absolutely. Throughout the whole thing. I chirp through the entire session. I mean, I just chirp and we have a good time. And I don't take myself seriously. I take my job serious as a photographer, but I believe that if you start taking yourself too seriously, um, that you t totally lose, you, you lose that, that magical moment right. that happens in people. Like, you know, just sitting and watching you the way you are right now, I could be clicking the camera away right now. See, right now this is click, 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 click. We're gonna do that in a minute. Great, because the whole idea, see, this is what, the, to me, the photographic experience is about. It's about this kind of communication like that you and I are having right now. Right. You see, we could be talking about you know our, our dogs or, or, or our vacations or whatever, and it's still, it, it's not about what you say, it's about getting people comfortable enough when they're seated with you or when you're talking with them. Um, it's a bouncing of the ball back and forth. Gotcha. And what if it just doesn't quite click? Do you have something that you just keep doing the process until you get them to open up? I do, I will move them. For instance, if I find somebody who's just a little bit stiff in one spot, I'll move them several times in the experience. Just because I find that the more that I will move them, it kind of makes, again, I want them to forget about the photographic experience. Right. How about camera angles as far as approaching the subject? Um, that's a very good question. It depends on who the subject is and, the, uh, and what I'm trying to gather. If I'm working with a mature woman like my age, I'm 50 years old, if I'm working with a mature woman, I can promise you I'm going to be photographing down on my subject. So I want a higher camera angle. Um, why? Because women tend to get this little bit of saggy skin under their chin. And if I work from a higher camera angle, it does two things. The first thing it'll do is it'll draw attention to the upper part of the face and not the jawline. And I won't see this area of, of the, the chin area. The second thing that, that I, I will do is I'll have her drop her chin a little bit and look at me with her eyes. Because what happens when she does that is that looking up with the eyes makes the, the eyes appear larger. And especially, you know, the older you get, you get that little bit of saggy skin up above your eyes. By, by dropping that chin a little bit and then having the subject look up at you with their eyes, it makes the eyes appear larger. So it's a really good way to photograph a mature woman. Um, there are times, however, when I might want to use a low camera angle. For instance, if I'm working with a man and I want him to appear more powerful and stronger and taller, then I might use a lower camera angle and photograph up at him and it'll make him appear more powerful and larger. Um, oh, another good thing too, if I'm working with a heavier subject, um, a larger person um, that's got more bulk, then I'm going to um, use a higher camera angle and I'm going to have them lean forward to the camera with their chest. So what final advice would you like to leave viewers with in terms of improving their photography? Um, at the end of the day, I would say learn to find and identify what pretty light looks like. Look for the catch lights in the eyes. Look for shadow areas on the face. Is the shadow um, on the face, is it below the nose or is it up above the nose? Look where the, the catch lights are in the eye. Are the catch lights in the upper part of the eye like at two o'clock or 11 o'clock or are they down below, which is kind of an unnatural kind of light uh, source to look at. And if you learn to identify where light is falling in a room, what does that mean? That means you can take beautiful pictures anywhere. You could be in the bathrooms at the, bathroom at the Howard Johnson's taking those images. You could be at home photographing your beautiful children and you don't have to be encumbered by lots of stuff. You could have a camera with a single lens on it and follow your children around and capture beautiful images of them. And then at the end of the day, expression rules. Expression over perfection. Don't work an image so hard, don't make, don't make it so hard to get an image and work it to death so in such a difficult way that you kill the magic. Because at the end of the day, it's about this if you're photographing people. It's about you know, getting what's in the soul. Take a personal interest in people. I, I find that if you take a personal interest in them and that you love people and you're not afraid of them, but that you love them, then you'll be a much better photographer of people. You know, because at the end of the day, it's, you know, don't be intimidated. Don't let people intimidate you because, you know, we all put our pants on the same way. Bambi, thank you so much for inviting us to your studio and giving us an inside look into your world of photography. You're very, very welcome. Thanks so much for coming. I really hope you enjoyed my talk with Bambi. Please be sure to get out there and practice what you learned today.
We're going to be bringing you guys a lot more videos with great photographers, so be sure to subscribe to our channel. We'd also really love your support with Patreon to make these videos available to you and the entire community. Please become a patron today by clicking on the link. Your donations of any amount to AYP really make a difference. And please share, like, and comment. We really love to hear from you. I want to thank Bambi for sharing her wisdom and for allowing us to use her amazing images. Please visit her website to see more of her work. Until next time, get out and capture your own images of life. We'll see you real soon.